I am very excited to present you with simple but at the same time very tricky question, which tests your math skills as well as attention to details. Florist has 77 beautiful plants. All but seven were sold. How many plants are left? You have four different choices. Choice A, seven. Choice B, 77. Choice C, 70. And choice D, 84. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The answer to this question is very simple. Seven plants are left. The answer is hidden in the tricky worded sentence, all but seven sold. So the correct answer here is choice A, seven. Hopefully you've read this question correctly, understood it very well, and solved it on your own. I had this question being asked as part of consulting job interview. How many seconds are there in a year? Take a look at the picture. It might give you a hint. Do you think you know the answer? Think of the logic. How would you calculate how many seconds are there in a year? Or maybe there is an alternative. Always try to think out of the box. This would be my hint to you. And give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is as much time as you might get answering these types of questions in the test. Now let's continue and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, this is a tricky question and it challenges you in understanding of the word second. There are two meanings in the word second. One is second, for example, one minute has 60 seconds. But second one is second, where you have sequence of first and second. And the second meaning of the second is used in this particular question. So if we go back to the question, in the year there are 12 months and there are 12 second days. One second day in each month. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, and etc. Hopefully you've nailed this question. It gives you some laugh and you now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Some of you might disagree, but calculating missing numbers is one of my favorite types of questions. A lot of times you are presented with the 3 by 3 matrix, typically a square, which has small squares inside. In our case, we have numbers in the different colors presented in the smaller squares inside the larger square. The numbers are 5, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4. And then one number is missing, and this is the one that you need to calculate. Once you complete the calculation, you need to select one of the four different choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And choice D, 3. Take a look closely and see if you can identify the missing number. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can come up with the right solution. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. In this particular case, we need to look at the patterns inside the rows and then inside the columns. Let's look at the first two rows to see if we can get the pattern. The sum of 5 plus 2 plus 1 equals to 8. The sum of 2 plus 3 plus 3 also equals to 8. So there might be a pattern. Let's look if there is a pattern for the columns that have full sets of numbers. 5 plus 2 plus 4 equals 11. 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 9. So there is no pattern. In this case, we can relatively simply use the pattern from the rows. This would allow us to calculate the third row. If we know that the sum should be 8, we can assume that the 4 plus 4 plus question mark, which would be representing the missing number, would be equal to 8. So the missing number would be equal to 0. The correct choice here is choice A, 0. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is another puzzling question you might find difficult to solve. You are presented with four triangles. Each triangle has a number in the corner. And you need to calculate one of the missing numbers in the upper corner of the black triangle. You have four different choices. You have choice A, 1. You have choice B, 2. You have choice C, 3. And you have choice D, 4. Can you determine the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. 
Determining the pattern is the key to solving this challenge. For example, if you add up the numbers in the lower left corners, 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 in all triangles, you will get to the sum of 10. Same thing happens when you add up the numbers in the bottom right corners of the same triangles. 2 plus 3 plus 0 plus 5 also equals 10. So same logic can be applied to the upper right corners of the triangles. As you can see, triangles are colored to confuse you. So you're only concentrated on the numbers inside of each triangles, but you're not looking across multiple triangles. The correct answer to this problem is choice A, 1, because this is the math of getting into 10 with the missing number. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I'm excited to share with you a cool question which is easy to understand, but which doesn't have an obvious answer. You're presented with the 2 by 3 matrix. This matrix has arrows inside. There are two types of arrows, solid arrows, and then there are arrows that consist of three different shapes. There are six possible spaces in the 2 by 3 matrix. Five shapes are present, and one shape is missing. You're presented with four different choices to identify the missing shape which is highlighted by the question mark. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can identify the right answer. Did you figure out the correct answer? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you always need to look for patterns. And there are three different patterns present in the sequence. Let's look at the pattern one. If we start from the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see that the arrows change alternatively in each subsequent box. Second pattern is that inside the box, solid arrows rotate clockwise. And then the third pattern, which is a little harder to identify, is that the previous arrow points to the next arrow start. This is why the missing part, the part that you would need to identify, contains an arrow placed in the right corner pointing to the left. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more problems and solutions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. I wanted to share with you a cool question which started showing up on the tests very recently. You're presented with the 3 by 3 matrix. Each square of the matrix contains another matrix inside with the 3 by 3 small squares. There are different colors inside 3 by 3 small squares. In this case, we see gray, white, and black. One 3 by 3 square is missing, and you need to select out of the four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. And your goal is to determine which of the following shapes completes the figure. Take a close look and see if you can identify the missing item. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, when you look for the first time, you might be intimidated by this matrix. But the answer actually is very simple. If we look closely at the smaller matrices, you see that the letters are being formed. You see that in the upper left corner, black boxes form a letter V. And if we look at the upper right corner, you see that the letter V also shows up, but now it's turned clockwise from the previous position. Let's go to the second row. In the second row, you can recognize letter T, and this letter shows up in the left column. But if we look in the middle row, in the right column, you see that the same letter T now is turned 90 degrees from the previous position. So now, if we follow the same logic, you can recognize letter V in the bottom left corner. According to the pattern that we've identified, this letter should be turned 90 degrees in the bottom right corner. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. In case you need to practice with more questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. I'm excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, 
you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You are presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect pattern among triangles and then among circles. In this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions in the test which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles. And in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. Circles in this picture do not have a pattern and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black white, shape B black white, shape C white black and then shape D white white. Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. In the first column, we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2 by multiplication get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there is no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. 
you have to look across and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. You're going to love this problem because it is so confusing. You're presented with multiple set of calculations. In our case, we have two full calculations, and one calculation is missing the final value. The first calculation is 22 multiplied by 22 equals 16. Second calculation is 33 multiplied by 33 equals 36. And then the last calculation is 44 multiplied by 44 equals question mark. And you need to calculate question mark. You have four different choices. Choice A, 52. Choice B, 56. Choice C, 60. And choice D, 64. Do you see the answer? It's not obvious. So give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I'm going to reveal the answer and we're going to get to the correct solution together. Typically, to solve these types of problems, you need to identify the pattern. And in this particular case, the pattern is that the sign and parentheses are hidden in between digits and are not presented on the screen. Let's look at the first two examples. 22 multiplied by 22 equals 16. It is not obvious because it doesn't go along with the rules of conventional math. But if you add parentheses and in parentheses add 2 plus 2, multiplied another set in parentheses 2 plus 2, you will be multiplying 4 by 4 and the result would be equal 16. Same thing with 3 by 3. If you add in parentheses 3 plus 3, multiply by another set in parentheses 3 plus 3, you will be multiplying 6 plus 6 and the result will be 36. So the correct answer here is the set in parentheses 4 plus 4 multiplied by another set in parentheses 4 plus 4, which would be multiplication of 8 by 8, and the end result of this would be 64. So the correct answer here is choice D, 64. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.